Good evening. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, Inspiration is bringing you a webinar all about fonts because that's what we all love. And what we're going to do is offer you in mass Catherine Artinas. She's going to talk to us today about fonts. And the title is True Type Tutorial. And she's going to do a little bit of toe tapping all through the types. Take it away, Catherine. Thank you, Dory. Good evening, everyone. Again, thank you for joining me for this True Type tutorial. As a sidebar, I would like to say a big thank you to our audience. I was attending Tamara's last webinar when there was some technical difficulty and you all stayed right where you were until it was fixed. I think we only lost one person. So kudos for staying and aren't you glad you did? Tamara always has great things to share with us and I never miss one. Also, I would like to strongly urge you to go take a look at Eileen's May 2nd Software Saturday blog. She shows you how to get the very most from these webinars by splitting your screen. It's easy and she shows you exactly how to do it. We'll begin with a bit of background. What is TrueType? It's a digital font technology developed by Apple in the late 80s and used by both Apple and Microsoft in their operating system since then. If you've used any of the Windows software, you've seen this TrueType designation as two capital T's to the left of the font name. This uh, picture that you're seeing right on screen was captured from Microsoft Word. So those things might look similar to you. TrueType offers the highest possible letter quality on computer screens and printers and can be scaled to any size and still remain crisp and clear for printing. But what do TrueType fonts mean for us as embroiders? I'm going to start with the screen. I already have some columnar headings started for us so that as I proceed through the samples and to tell you some comparisons and so forth, I thought this would be an easier way for you to keep straight the two types of uh, ways that we can access and use true type fonts in Perfect Embroidery Pro. The first is a little bit of review for you from February webinar when we did our creating with a text tool. We click on the text tool, click somewhere on our screen, I'll bring that down, change the color for us, and then we come over here to the right in the properties text box. You may remember that this is where we type the word that we're going to be using. This, uh, with this month being May, I'm going to be using a number of different references for the fun things that happen in May. Memorial Day usually is the first time we see our fireworks. We'll go ahead and apply that. It comes up on our screen. I'm going to go back under Properties Text Transform, click on that, and change this to a .5 and apply that. Bring my text under this column because this one was indeed created with the text tool. This might look familiar to you in that we see all of our black diamonds and green dots and our black squares. We talked about that in February, about all of those things and how they work. I'll use my select tool here so that the word is selected. I like to work with my 3D on so that you can see, you actually can see the misspelling up there. And that's one of the nice things about our text tool. I can go right in that box, backspace out, type in the proper spelling of fireworks and make that correction. This is a, uh, again, created with the text tool. I'm going to right click, copy it, right click, paste, bring that down, change the color by right clicking on my red. I'm going to right click, paste again, drag that one down, right click, oops, uh, right click on my color and change that to green. I know that technically the second one is more of a fuchsia color and this third is more of a teal, but I'll just refer to them as red and green for you to see on your screen. As it stands right now, all three of these words are the exact same because I did a copy paste. They are done with the text tool. I'll select the second one, fireworks in red, and we come over here to our properties in text. This is one of the ways that we can use our true type font. 
you notice right here this box, it does not have a check mark in it, but it has a TT, which stands for our true type. When I click in that box, you see a difference in the font. I go to an Arial font, and we see a drop down arrow here, um, currently set to satin. We're going to leave those defaults as they are, click on apply, and this word, the red word in fireworks, turns into that Arial font that is a true type font. <coughs> I'll click on the green, bring us back over here to our properties box. Once again, click within that TT box to turn on the true type. And we see again that this is a drop down arrow. You know that that offers you choices. I'll click on that. See, my only other option is artwork. I'm going to click on the artwork and apply. And you see that it looks similar to the font because it is, they're both aerial, but this is, has more of a flat look to it because the threads have not yet been assigned. What I want to point out to you is whether or not uh, we are using the red one, which is the satin filled, or I select the green one, which is the artwork. Both of them give us full access to all of the text properties that we are offered in this first box. Um, if I click on the red one, which is our satin true type, and I click even here under type, the ability to work with circle, monogram, path, those are all available to us, stairs, we can deal with our height and space and line spacing. And you'll notice too that we have all of the icons going across the top for the different properties of our full blown text, whatever we need to access. If I come select on the green one, which is the artwork true type. Again, I have all of the types available to me. Again, circle, monogram, path, everything as it was for the other. But you'll notice that I do not have all of those icons of the properties. And the reason for that is the green is artwork. It has not been assigned stitches yet. So there are no properties that apply to stitches, only that that applies to artwork. Our second option to use a true type text is to go under file, come down to the fifth one where it says import TT text. The TT stands for true type. And this actually is proper terminology because we are importing true type text, not a true type font. That's a totally different thing. We'll go ahead and click on our option here. And what comes up is an import text box, the white window waiting for me to type in my text. I'm gonna type in the same word that we are working with so that everything stays the same. We also see that it is an Arial font. For the moment, I'm going to leave that. I will okay it. The word fireworks comes up on my screen. I'm going to put it under this column because this particular word was created when we did file import true type text. Now we're going to compare this artwork with the green artwork over here, remembering that this was done with the text tool. With the comp comparisons, they are both artwork. As you see here in the sequence view, if I were to click on my plus sign and scroll down a little bit, you see that each of these characters, if I select each one, they are independent objects of artwork. The software does not read this as a word. It is just seeing it as individual pieces of artwork. If we come over here to the green fireworks and I click on that, you see that it selects the entire object because it is seeing this as one object, as a word, if I come back to sequence and expand my plus sign, you see the difference here. It is only one object. Here, if we do an import TT text, it is individual pieces. Knowing that they are both artwork, if I come back here and select just one of my characters in this artwork and come over here to the toolbar, the second button down is our shape tool. We've played with this before. If I click on that, I do have the option because this is artwork and shape is an uh, artwork tool. You see that I have the points or nodes on each individual piece of artwork. The shape tool is still selected. I could come down here to my green and I try to select any character and it is not available to me 
with the artwork that was done with a text tool. So this is also one of the differences between the ways of creating them. Why is that important? Well, if I go to click on this and I have points to play with, I can click on those points and drag them and reshape my, in this case, letters, although the software is looking at it as it is artwork, but I can reshape that and have a lot of fun with uh, playing with different shapes and so forth with my text. I'll go ahead and do an undo and put those points back where they were. So that is another difference. Um, we've already seen where, go back and get my select tool here. If I select all of my text, this properties box is different. Again, to refresh you, if I click on the green, all of these objects for property text are available. If I select my artwork from the import, none of it is. Um, it is treated as straight artwork. I'm going to go ahead and fill my text. To do so, we'll start with our green. If we actually want to add um, stitch to this, the only thing I need to do for this one is to use the drop down arrow and instead of having it be artwork, choose satin, do an apply, and it looks just the same as if I had created from uh, the beginning and left it at satin. If I select my imported artwork, the way that I need to apply uh, stitches to that is to right click, convert, and I'm going to do a satin. You see that that looks very similar, and it will. They are both Arial True Type font, and here I have a satin. But again, even though it looks like this green one, I can select the individual pieces of the what I see as the words. Another difference, if I want to change the look of this, the actual font, I select it because I have all of these options over here in my properties text, I can actually go down, get this out of my way here, and uh, click right in this window right here. This is what's offering me the font. Click on that drop down arrow, and I am brought into a very long list of the true type fonts available to me on my computer. You can see that they're in alphabetical order, and again, a very long list. Now, where does this list come from? The list of fonts available comes from your operating system. So if you're on a PC, that would be Windows. If you're on an Apple or a Mac, that would be OS. Also, if you've loaded any additional software that uh, included its own true type fonts, and finally, if you have downloaded any font collections. So your list of true type fonts might be different from your friends or from mine. Here, if I come in and I want to um, make another change, I can go in and choose Bernard. And then I will apply. And over here in green, we see that it has changed the look of the font. The difference here for the um, font, the fireworks word created with the import, I cannot change that font. If I select it and look around anywhere on the screen, there's no place on the screen that's going to allow me to change that font. Once it's on the screen, that's what it is. Even if I were to go back to File, Import True Type Text, my box comes up again, but you see that it's ready to start a brand new text box. It has no relationship at all to what is currently on the screen. So if I wanted a different font, I would have to go in and change the font. This box right here, it is a button with these three dots or periods on it. That's really called an ellipse. This is a computer thing. Any place you ever go in any software, and you see this kind of box with an ellipse, it is telling you that you have other options available. So if I click on that, I am brought into my font box. These are true type fonts. It's the same list here that we saw over in the drop down arrow for the other one. Uh, I could move through my list of fonts and I'm going to find the same one, my Bernard. In this second column here, you'll see the font style. These are the styles that are applicable to the highlighted font. If I were to choose the Berlin Sans, you'll see that I have different styles. 
So it is the font choice over in the first column that will control what you have offered for you in the second column. The third column is size, and the size of point is determined, or um, the size of the font is determined by point size, 28 point, 36 point, and so forth. To give you some reference, 72 point equals one inch. So therefore, 36 point would be a half inch. So if you can kind of keep that in your head, it'll give you some idea of the size of point. I'm going to go ahead and choose a 72 so it'll be as large as it can be on my screen when it first comes in. I OK that. There's my word. Here's the font that I've chosen. I go ahead and OK that. Comes on the screen. Remember, it does not yet have any uh, stitch information to it. Before I go any further, I'm going to change the color. So I would right click, come up to convert, choose satin. And I have the look of this fireworks. The last thing I'd want to do to make them uh, equal in comparison is if I go ahead and make that a 0.5 as well. And my sizes are different. But that is another difference between the way that you cr um, create these fonts. Once you put a import TT text on screen, there's no way for you to go back and change the font unless you recreate another box. Another change between these two is our ability to work with applique. Once again, I'll go under File, Import True Type Text, sticking with my May, my Memorial Day theme at the moment. I'll go in and I will choose Arial, but I'm going to choose the black. Um, if ever you can't see what that looks like, I can go ahead and choose a smaller point size to see it. I'll go ahead and OK that. It comes in very small. I'm going to go in and make the size larger because this is an applique. I would want it larger. Move that over just a little bit. And if I do a right click, convert to applique, it actually does that. Bring this uh, down just a little bit so you can see it, move it down a bit. And I might want to change the applique width to maybe a 2.5, apply that. My stitching is not quite as wide, but you can see that when you create with your file import TT text, you have the ability to um, turn that into an applique. I do not have that option if I choose any of my text over here with my text tool. I have nothing over here allowing me to work with an applique. The only way that I would be able to do that would be a right click and break up the text. And once I do that, it is no longer text. It would be the same as if I made it into artwork. So if you want applique, your best option then is to go under your file, import, true type text. One other thing before we leave this screen, um, I'll go ahead and choose this. Oops, I'm going to select this and bring this down to the screen a little bit so you can see it. <clears throat> bring my screen back up a bit. So, oh, let's even bring that up a little more so you can see what I'm going to do here. Set up my screen so you can see me. And here uh, I do have this fireworks that is artwork. If ever you for forget which way you created something, I could click on any one of those characters and uh, that tells me that this is artwork. But what I want to point out to you before we go any further is, yes, this is artwork. Yes, they are individual characters. I could play with these individual characters if I choose. I could select one, come down here and change the color. I could select another, come over here to the pattern of my fill and change that maybe to brick and apply and go through each individual character treating them separately. Or I could go and um, ask it to group and then move it. It moves as one individual character. The advantage to doing that is now if I come over and I go to change the pattern and uh, just as an aside here, do you see how this white window is empty, but yet I have fill over here? The reason this is empty, it has no option up there, is because I have two types of fill in the selection 
that I've chosen. So it doesn't know which one to indicate, so it indicates neither. But that's why if I were to just choose this one, oops, I'm sorry, I already grouped it. Um, but if I had uh, individuals, it would show. In this way, I'm going to go in and change the whole thing to a corn fit, and you see that each individual one has been changed. If I want to uh, take off the group, I simply right click and ungroup it, and then I can put those characters back into my line if I wish to do that. The opposite of that, if I right click and copy just to show you a difference here and paste it, I'll make all of it uh, one color. If you right click another option that you think might work the same as combine, but it really doesn't. When you combine, and here's the difference between grouping something and combining, I have actually, when you do a combine, it is now treating this word as one unit. If I expand it over here, you see that it is one. Over here, these are individual. Even if I group them, right click group, and they are grouped, they are still left as individual items. So do be careful because if I were to right click and convert that to a complex fill, you see because this has been combined, it's going to stitch out very awkward um, and truly something that you do not want to happen. So just be aware of when you group. Um, we'll do some combining later, but it will not be combining of the full word. Okay. Dory, do we want yes, to stop right there? Do we have any questions at this point? Yes, we do. We have a couple of them. And one is, Cindy asked if I create something with the true type font and take it to another computer that doesn't have that font, will the font stay the same in the C2S format? It'll, um... If I create... I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes, I understand the question, and it's yeah. something that I've never done before. So I'm going to go with yes it will because the file will be saved. Um, it is artwork. It's done by point and my guess without doing this automatically is that it will. Yes. Um, if you create something with the true type font and take it to another computer that doesn't have that font, it doesn't change what you have built. It's the same as taking a design from one computer to another. Even though you've got the program on both computers, it's still going to recognize that design, and it will see it in that format. And that would be, as I said, not having done that, mm -hmm. but understanding what your true type is, um, I, that was why I went with a yes on my answer because it's if it's artwork and you're saving that artwork, it's the same as if you saved a circle or a triangle or a rectangle or anything like that. Yes. Um, so that makes sense. Yes. Okay. And here's another stumper. I have more <laughs> font options using the true type option on the text tool than I do when I use the import true type option. Any ideas why? There are some true type fonts that are listed as such and not necessarily are they real true type font. Um, you can create true type fonts by, um, it, it's very easy to convert them from something like a postscript or other font technology. But that doesn't necessarily mean it is a real true type font that's going to be recognized from the software. Um, I don't know if that's going to, if that answer helps specifically or not, but there, it is something I was going to mention later that we do have to uh, be aware of, I guess, is not, not all text that is listed as true type is really a true type font or was created in that technology. Yes. Okay, thank you. That answers that one. And can I give you one last one? Sure. Dottie would like you to explain one more time, please, the difference between the red and green you just taught. She wants okay. to... Okay, under our... Yes. These two right here. Okay, they all were done 
with the, the text tool. I just did a copy paste, but let me show you from scratch if we were going to do this again. If I come up here to my text tool and click on text tool, you know that if I click anywhere on the screen, the default is the letter A. I'll come over here and I'll just type USA for us. Um, even before I apply and I click on the true type here and leave it for sa as satin, the very last font that I have used here will come up. So we'll go ahead and let's say that's not the one we want and we want to change something else maybe into Britannic and then I apply this USA, I'll turn it into the same color, that USA is the same as this one right here. If instead I click again on the screen, and I'll bring that over just a bit to stand out, again I come over to my text um, window here where I'm going to type, and I type in, oops, let's type in USA, and then I go ahead and click in the true type, but instead of making it satin, I want to make it artwork and apply it. I'll turn that to the same color so that we are making reference here. This USA uh, was how I originally had this fireworks. The pink is how, or the red USA is how I did the fireworks up here. This stays as artwork but it has all the capability of your text. Um, you remember all of your diamonds and squares and so forth. But at any time when I'm ready to turn that into stitch, I'm going to come back over here and instead of allowing it to be artwork, I'll use that drop down arrow and choose satin and apply it. The One of the pros or the pluses creating with the text tool is that at any point I can use this and change the font to anything that I have in my list. I can't do that once I've typed something in the import true type text. But that is one of the major pluses of creating true type with your text tool is your ability to change your mind. Does that help? I think so. And can you just quickly go over oh, the red and the green on the bottom as well. Red and green is very popular the orange tonight. And the green down here. Yes. It is. Um, if I do my select, what I was showing here, that this was this belongs over in this column because it was created with the import true type. So that that is true artwork. And what I was showing with both of these is the difference is I'll just size these up a little bit so you can see them better is the, um, get these out of our way, is the difference. This one I had done a group, and if you don't remember if it's grouped or not, if I right click, I can see the group is grayed out. That means it is grouped, because my only other option is to ungroup it. If I uh, chose this item and right click, you'll see that the combine is not offered to me because it already is combined and the only thing I would be allowed to do with it is to break it apart. I can show you that right now and look it even makes it worse because it takes away all the jump stitch but it doesn't leave our characters as they were. Um, anything that has an inside hole to it like the E and the O, I've ungrouped that and removed those inner holes. Uh, we'll see this later. I have another project for us to do with that and um, it, it just changes the differences. So both of these, this orange one and, and green one, were done as true type, but I was showing you a difference in grouping and in combining. This one now is uh, broken apart. Super. Thank you. Okay. Nope. I have a, a document here um, already done where I actually have here on screen for you to see what those pros and cons are. Um, and even though this is a, a something that I've done in, in uh, Perfect Embroidery Pro for you to see, remember when you look back at these webinars, you have the ability to pause. So if you want to look at this longer than that webinar allows you to look at it, remember you can always go down on the video and pause it and look at this and, and sort of try to understand a little bit more what your pros and cons are of 
creating your true type with a text tool and creating your true type from the file import. This is true artwork with all of the capabilities of artwork. This is more text with all the capabilities of text. Okay, um, we'll move on then and I have another document that I've already started. We'll open that up, turn on my 3D and talk about um, working with narrow or very thin fonts. You are going to be tempted to use fun, flowery, thin fonts because they're pretty. But you have to ask yourself, what's going to happen when I try to create this look with thread? Remember, true type fonts were created with printing in mind. And we can get very thin and very crisp with printing. But with these very thin fonts, and we try to add thread to them, we could cause um, situations for ourselves. I already have these typed, obviously, but I'll do one for you so I can bring it up on the screen and show. We'll use the same phrase. Oops, got my caps on. We'll do the same phrase so that we are comparing like items. I'll use my ellipse to go find my font. The one that I want is called Edwardian Script. It's in alphabetical order, so I'll come down a little bit. And here it is right here. I'm going to leave it regular. I have it in a larger, the 72 point here. We'll OK that, bring it to screen. It comes up on screen. I'm going to make it a little larger for you all to see. I'll put it at one inch here. And um, Again, a very lovely font, very pretty, all this scroll business going on, very dainty in some areas. But we ask ourselves, is this appropriate for thread, for stitches? As I do a um, select and I right click and convert it first to satin, you can see that this is not what I want at all. It doesn't even fill in the areas. Uh, so we'll undo it. It's selected, right click, convert to complex fill. We have some issues going on with the capital letters and some of them in the small letters and so forth. We can edit true type font a little bit. Um, depends on how much time you want to spend doing that. But one of the things I would try with this particular word or phrase would be to come over here to underlay. I would change it from a perpendicular to an edge travel, which is acceptable with a thin font like this. And you can see that when I did, that does clear it up just a little bit. If we zoom in, though, we can see that we have some other issues that are going to happen right in this area right here. This area right here, if I use my pan tool and move over a little bit, we have issues right in here, right in here. So even though we have fixed the look of it, um, we can still sort of guess that this is going to give us some problems. Again, um, I bring this to your attention. That's not to say that you might never use one of these particular fonts, but you really do uh, have to ask yourself what's going to happen when I add thread. You really must do a test stitch out of your design when you are using true type text, especially with these very thin um, fonts. And this is not appropriate for all fabric. I wouldn't do any of this on fabric that had any kind of nap to it. So you do have to bring logic to your project. The other thing I want to bring to your attention is when you um, work with very small font, don't use true type text to make very small letters. Let me zoom in on these two and you to uh, point some things out to you here. Oops. This particular one was done with our mini Arial Small. Mini as in M-I-N-I, -I, not mini meaning more than one. Uh, you may remember from February that we have a number of these mini fonts built in and they were specifically digitized to stitch out that small in a three, four, or six millimeter. Um, the one underneath it was done as a true type font changed to a complex fill satin. And you can see the differences here. The red one specifically 
digitized for that little and you can see how well it's going to do on the curves and so forth. This other one that was our true type made into something very small is not uh, as nicely stitched. It's not going to stitch as nicely. So again, I would uh, give you another caution that when you want to do something very small that you go ahead and go back to your text tool and bring in those mini fonts. Having talked again about mini fonts, do remember you need that 60 weight thread and a number nine needle to do things that small. Dory, any other thoughts or questions at this point? There we go. No, okay. Uh, you handled that okay. well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the only thing I was going to stress on uh, the mini fonts, we only we do have a select amount of them in our software, and every single one of these keyboard fonts were specifically digitized to be no larger than six millimeter. That's really tiny. It is very tiny. Uh, as you see on the screen right here, that is just very tiny. Um, so yes, again, emphasizing the fact specifically digitized to be that small. Um, that is very important. Okay. Okay. We'll go ahead and move from the technical aspects of our true type artwork to the more fun side. Bring up a clean screen. I'm going to go back into file import true type text the word we're going to play with is also a part of may i'll go into my true type font choices i'm going to look for cooper and you'll notice that most of what i pick for this evening are the uh, larger thicker heavier fonts they show up better for what i'm going to show you and also um, they, they tend to be the ones I choose anyway, even with projects that I'm doing. This is a Cooper, the word bloom. Um, let me check the size here. We're going to do a 1.5 for what we're playing with. Apply that. Double click on our magnifying glass to bring it into size. We have been playing with the convert to. We've done a, a run and a satin of complex fill, but we've not yet done a cross stitch might be something you do or don't do. It has a little heirloom or vintage look to it, but I just wanted to show you that yes, you can. We can also come over here to the size. I'm gonna make it just a little bit larger X and do an apply. And when I do that, do you see that some of the tops of the letters themselves have some wild hairs to them is what I call it. And uh, because this is artwork, we can do a little bit of editing to this kind of text. If I click on L, uh, remember that these are individual pieces of artwork. I've not grouped the word. You also remember that we can use the shape tool to do so. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. With my shape tool, if I take that middle point and drag it down ever so slightly and apply it, you see that I get rid of those wild hairs. I can do the same with my O, bring that middle point down just a bit, apply it, and now those top hairs are off. I'll fix this one to match my other O, bring that in just a little bit, apply, and be coops, the uh, letter M has some hairs on both tops. So once I select it with my shape tool being on, I actually, can just drag across to select those, drag them both down at one time just a little bit and apply. And you can see now that I have, um, my letters are all nice and flat on top. If you would like to move these characters over a bit, I can select just the last three. And on my keyboard, I'm going to do a nudge. Yes, I could click and drag these three over, but the nudge allows everything to stay in a horizontal fashion nicely. By a nudge, I mean I am holding down my control key and tapping the right arrow key on my keyboard, and you can see things move as I type my arrow, and I've nudged it over just a bit, and now that looks a little better. I have a little bit more white space in there. So that's a nice way to use our cross stitch. Another word that we can play with for this month, 
file import true type text. I'm going to type in love. This is the month of mothers, so we're going to spread some love here a little bit. I'm going to go all the way down in my list to Gil Sands. By clicking in this scroll bar here, you can see I move a screen at a time. Click on my Gil Sands, OK that, OK that. Bring that word down a bit, change to a red, and I will size that over here in my transform. I'm going to make that a one and a half high. Bring that down a little bit, and you can see our word. Right click, convert to. I'm going to go back to complex fill here because there's some other fun things that we can do. You see how nicely that does a fill pattern. Coming over here to fill type, a drop down arrow. Let's play with motif. I'll apply that. And you see a very nice uh, diamond effect goes to the word. But because this word means love, let's go see and apply a more appropriate pattern which are our hearts, and that fills up our word. I can come here and make that a larger heart, apply it, and I like the look of that. That looks fun. But whenever you use a motif fill, you'll see that you have some white space in here, some open space here and there, and it doesn't always fill up, so you might think that you want an outline. Well, the whole word is selected. If we right-click and we create an outline, you may remember the trick of typing in a zero in the distance is going to make the outline hug the actual shape of the characters. And that looks nice, except we look here to the center of our O and see that it did not outline this inner circle. And it will not, because outline only does the outside of our characters. Okay, let's do an undo and take away that outline because we have a better choice. If I select only one object and do a right click, here I have the option to create a border. Looks very lovely. I'll do the same with my O. Right click, create border, and you see that right away it has taken care of that inner circle. Let's finish our word. Right click, create border. Right click, create border. And now we have a nice look to the word itself. If I come back up to Bloom, and uh, sometimes I just like to select by color, we could right click, um, convert to, complex fill, go back into here, and instead of standard, let's play a little bit with our other options. We have the ability to apply a shape that gives a very cool look to our word. We can also uh, go in and choose contour and apply that. That gives a different look. To me, this is a little art deco. I think it's kind of fun. And finally, we could go in and apply a wave and apply that. And we see that this has a wave look to it. Um, I could even make the, the density on that wave less by putting in a higher number, and you see we have less of the lines in there, and we can see it a little better. So there's lots of fun things that you can do with your characters. All right, let's go into um, a, a new document here. I want to talk to you about script for a moment. So we'll do a file, import true type text. Bear with me here because I'm going to do my words in two different fonts which we are allowed to do. I'm going to do the capital letter um, as a flat one here. Let's go down to impact, scoot down there a little bit in alphabetical order. Choose that, OK it, bring that to the side a bit, and then I'm going to go back into File, Import, True Type Text, and I'll type the rest of my word for liberty, I-B-E-R-T-Y go in and choose a different font, I want my brush script. So we can talk about that um, script a little bit. We'll OK that and bring it in. And I'm going to change my L to a red just so it makes it easier for me to play with. And I'll make that a 1.5 height. And we look then to the word liberty. And if I zoom in for you a little bit, I want you to notice, do you see that this particular font overlaps the individual characters to give it uh, 
a very nice script look when I fill it. If I do a right click and I convert it to a, um, let's see, we'll put it to a satin and turn on the 3D so that you can see it. And you, you can tell that because it was overlapped a little bit, gives us a very nice look to this script. If I turn it back, do a right click, convert to run, you can see this is not what we want. Because of the fact that this has the overlap, we still see that overlap in, uh, in a, each individual character is treated individually. So we see the stops and starts of those characters not truly the look that we are after in a script. So let's undo that. It's back to being artwork and now I want to show you a very um, a very cool thing. This is one of the beauties of your true type being artwork. If I select the Y, I'm going to hold down my control key and select the T. I'm coming up here to my shape tools the middle of which is weld. I'll click on weld and you see that's exactly what happened here. It is now creating uh, these two or making these two into one unit. You can't do it if you select more than one or two items at a time. It can't weld more than two items. So now that this is considered one, I'll hold down my control key and select the R, come up here and weld. And you see that it has done that hold down my control key, select the E, come up and do a weld. Again, it is now into one unit. Hold down control, select the B, weld, hold down control, select the I, and weld. And you see now that there are no breaks, there are no individual characters in this anymore. So now if I right click, convert to run, I get a very nice look. Let me bring that back to something that makes more sense to see. I can even come over here to my stitch length and change that to a two and apply it. And that is a much better look um, to my script. Okay. Something else that we can do that's fun, if I go into File, Import True Type Text, once again I'm going to type in my USA, go get my Arial Black again and OK that, bring that back to the screen. I will go in and make that a one and a half, apply it, scoot over a bit so you can see, come down, oops, come down a bit so you can see. I'm going to come now back up to this button we've used in previous seminars, the text designs, use the drop down arrow and go into motif shapes, double click number 17, the star. It comes in as a motif shape. If I right click, convert it to artwork, change it to red, and I'm going to come over here to the size and make it a half inch, a 0.5, and I'll apply that. I'm going to bring that star right up here to the top, right click copy, right click paste, drag that over to the top of here, paste it again, position that differently, right click paste it again. Remember I don't have to keep copying it, I can just continue to paste it. It's in the clipboard. Size that down just a little bit. Because now I'm going to go back and use the weld key again, select my star, control key down, and the letter U, and weld. You see that they put those two together. I'll select that. Oops, let me do the star first so you can see it. And then the U, weld those. It's all one unit. If I select, the S and the star. I'm going to use a different tool, this time the trim. Let's click on that and see what just happens with the trim. It's kind of like a remove overlap. It took out or uh, kept the shape of the star in the letter S. I'll do an undo and put that back. And then this time, if I select both the A and the star, I'm going to come over here to the paper clip and do a combine. This is one of the times we will want to combine. Once I've done all those three things to this word, if I select them all, right click, convert to complex fill, turn on my 3D, you can see how fun it is that you can make your words look like what they are representing. So it can be a very fun thing. 
This next one is when you want to work with an embossed monogram. You may have seen this look before. This might be a different way for you to achieve that look. We have um, our file, import true type text. I'm going to type my initials, go in and get the Cooper font. I like that, especially for our purposes uh, here. OK it. OK it. I come on screen. I'm going to make those be one and a half. Apply it. I'm going to take the letter A and overlap it just a little bit on the K. It is selected. Control, select the K, come back up here to my weld. You can see that I like this look. It's going to give us a very interesting um, emboss. I'll come back to 100% so you can see what I'm doing. Going back up to my artwork tool, using the drop down arrow, choosing a rectangle, if I hold my control key down while I am dragging, it's going to give me a perfect square. I select it, come over here and size it. Um, I'll size that to a three and a half. The, I want to select both of these because they need to be centered. I can either drag around all of them or I could have come over here and clicked on all items but the first thing I want to do is come up here to align center align the ka is aligned into the center of my square and then next come up here and right click on my ruler ask it to center origin and it has done that I'm going to do a drop down and bring us back to 100 percent and at this point everything is still selected I am going to come over here to my combine and click on combine. So now the software sees all of that as one unit. If I right click, convert to a complex fill, it fills everything in, in the background leaves my two areas empty, but I don't want this complex fill. Come over here to my fill type and uh, do a drop down arrow. I want it to be a wave. And as I apply that, comes in to that um, slightly waved line. I'm going to change my stitch length. Uh, oh, uh, my density actually is what I want to change to three. I'll apply that. And now here's the trick to getting this to help me with the embossing. I'm going to choose my shape tool and I see this yellow guideline right in here. This is the angle line for the wave. And normally, you could click on that center and, um, if I can grab that, I probably need to zoom in here just a little bit. If I click on the center of that, and then I would drag any of those uh, angle handles, I can change the arc of the wave. But what I want to do is a right click on the center. I actually want to delete that point altogether so that it gives me a vertical straight line, apply it, and you can see that my grid is just that, vertical straight line. Okay. I want to select all of it again, right click, copy, right click, paste. I'm going to change it to red so it will help you see what I'm doing. And this time choose my shape tool and I'm going to alter the angle line. Going up to my ruler and I'm clicking within that ruler to drag down a guideline. I use these all the time. I like them. This is going to help me as I want to make this be a straight horizontal line. To get rid of the guideline at any point, you right click in the ruler, remove guidelines. So now I have this angle line as a horizontal. I apply it and you see what happens. I've given myself a grid. Let's take a look at this. You may remember that over here in sequence, if I click on the eyeball for the blue, I have hidden the blue. The red shows my horizontal grid. Let's bring that blue back and hide the red, and you see I have a vertical grid. So if I bring both of them back, I see my uh, double grid, vertical horizontal, which is going to allow the, um, that stitching is going to mat down any of a napped fabric, allowing everything in this area here to show through. The last thing I want to do is to right click, create a border, and there's the look that I'm after. I can show you briefly what this looks like if you've never seen it. Um, 
This is the grid that tamps down all of the nap on this towel and it allows the nap to show through the letters. It's a very interesting look. Um, again, you may have seen this before done in a different fashion, but it's very fun to do it. And I have another one done for you for this month um, showing you the exact same way. We just did that, but you could also do it with mom, noticing that these letters are not welded, uh, fun in the sun. The difference here, this particular shape came from the same motif shapes that I have, uh, I've gotten a star from there, but here's the shape right here, and I've simply uh, rotated it for it to work with mom. And then the difference with this one is that the background is not done as a wave grid, but rather just as a smaller diamond motif. This one would not mat down or tamp down the pile so as well as the grid, so you might use this on something that had less of a pile. But it's a very fun look and again, fun things that you can do with your true type fonts. One last thing to show you, uh, and I have it already started for us so as not to take too much time. And as we come into this screen, it's the ability to take a true type character and a shape, weld them together for this look right here. So I've got it started. This is the letter A from Mark Gil Sands. It does need to be uh, broken apart, so I'm going to right click and do a break apart. That will isolate this middle area of the A, which I'm just going to do a keyboard delete. I'll bring my apple into the middle. I could even size that a little bit. And the trick to this then is to select both of those items, come over here to do a combine. They are now one unit. Right click, convert to complex fill. And you see that that's how I achieved this look right here. And to show you again, May being the month for moms, you can do the same kind of thing with the letter O bringing in the heart. And once again, I just got these shapes from either the motif shapes or the applique shapes. Um, there's a lot of fun ones in there as well. Okay, um, one other thing to talk about is downloading a font collection. Um, when we, oh, this was another sample of welding characters together. This actually was on a quilt that I did from my grandson who is due next month, so hopefully he won't come on the webinar night. But as we uh, move to the screen, just a word about free fonts. Uh, there's many, there are many different websites out there that offer you fonts, some you pay for, some are free. This is one called 1001freefonts.com. I am not advocating this one, it just happens to be one that I've gone to occasionally. Uh, and I captured one of their screens to talk about this kind of thing with you. Once again, when you are tempted to download fonts, and you know you're going to be using these with um, Perfect Embroidery Pro. You have to ask yourself which of these would be appropriate with thread. The first and the fourth would be okay choices. The middle two are not and I would strongly suggest that you don't even try to work with these kinds of things like this with thread. As I said before, um, it's very easy to create true type fonts by converting them for PostScript or others, but it's even easier to do so badly. So you have to make wise choices if you're going to go outside the software for additional fonts. Um, some of you already know how knowledgeable and sharing Nancy R. from the forum is. And she warns us on the forum that too many fonts in the main folder will slow down the computer. Um, a program she uses to temporarily work with fonts without cluttering the main font program is this AMP font viewer. I have uh, received her permission to show you this. Um, she's uh, uh, said that yes, I can steer you to her website to go to the free tutorials to download a free font viewer file that explains where to get this program and how to use it so that you can work with uh, other font collections or downloaded ones without truly having them downloaded into your main font folder. So uh, some thoughts at that point. Okay, we come back 
uh, this is a picture of our original screen, but um, having played with the things that we've done, you have somewhat now a better notion of how you would go about making these types of looks that I have up on the screen for you. Do we have any final questions, Dory? At this time, uh, we don't. However, um, if I can just interject how much I appreciate your webinars and the work that you do to give us a very good webinar. We appreciate that. Um, Nancy R. and Chris L. are always there in the background to give us a hand and to answer all your questions. Thank you so much, Catherine, for such a wonderful True Type uh, webinar. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dory, and thank all of you for being with me this evening. I hope you can join me next month for Permission to Play, and I'll leave you with these inspirations for your true type text. Thank you, everyone. Good night.